greetings to all of you uh, this is just a short video to discuss the karnataka high court judgment that has just come out in the matter in which uh, hijab wearing students had petitioned for their right to education unfortunately the uh, judgment has failed to protect that right and we'll discuss the judgment in detail but uh, first we want to um, appeal to the supreme court uh that an immediate stay must be placed on the Karnataka High Court judgment because even the interim judgment of the Karnataka High Court had been used as we saw to subject uh hijab wearing muslim girls uh, students as well as even teachers in Karnataka uh, colleges and schools uh to humiliate them to force them to strip their hijab off in public at the gates of educational institutions before entering them we are also seeing how the hijab wearing students of these colleges uh want to they are not being able to uh, even give their exams their education is in danger so first their right to education should be protected should be ensured uh and then the supreme court uh, can of course uh, hear the appeal which i believe has already been filed in the supreme court so uh the merits of the case and all of that supreme court will look at later but first there should be a stay on this and there are also incidents from all over the country where the karnataka order was being used as a uh, pretext for communal discrimination and uh, harassment of uh, muslim women who wear who wear hijabs this happened even in a bank in bihar not to mention schools and colleges on one occasion in karnataka even a uh, sick girl a six girl student who was wearing a dupatta covering her head was told she can't attend her classes but then later they gave in and allowed her to attend them so this is a pretty urgent matter now let's come to the judgment and uh, what uh, we feel is that the judgment has basically uh, kind of missed the whole point in the first place why did this matter come to the court at all the uh, the court has said that hijab is not an essential practice in islam and islam will not fall down and collapse if uh, women don't wear hijab right but that's neither here nor there you know because the real issue before the court was not whether or not uh, hijab is an essential practice that was not the issue the issue before the court was uh can uh, any schools and colleges under pressure from hindu supremacist groups under threat of violence and disruption from hindu supremacist groups uh change their rules amend their rules overnight in order to prohibit hijab wearing women and girls from accessing education that was really the issue right the other issue was one of equality which is that when schools and colleges allow hindu girls hind and sikh girls and women to cover their heads with uh, dupatta to cover their heads with a sari pallu to wear uh, th sacred threads of various kinds when they allow hindu boys and girls both men and women both to wear various sacred threads um you know which are caste either caste notif not uh, caste signifiers or they are uh you know worn after some kind of uh, uh uh some kind of puja or whatever it is they are all allowed to do that along with their uniform no one stops them hindu men and women uh, boys and girls they wear bindi they wear uh, tilak they wear putt all kinds of things no one ever stops them likewise uh, sikh uh, men and women boys and girls are allowed so uh, christian boys and girls can wear a cross they are all allowed to wear anything which is signifying or you know they uh, various people wear lockets which signify certain kind uh, which have a religious significance all of this is allowed right uh, so why is it that you are uh, singling out the hijab and hijab wearing students uh, and saying to them that at the cost of not accessing your education we will prevent you from entering schools and colleges how can this be allowed was the real issue so it was an issue of equality as well as it uh, it was also an issue of uh, dignity and the autonomy of women and uh, right to education 
But uh, in all of this, uh, and of course, the fact that all these things were being put in danger by Hindu supremacist groups. Remember that Karnataka colleges and schools, not a single one had a rule book which prohibited uh, hijab wearing uh, students from attending classes or entering the college. Not a single. In fact, some colleges particularly had provisions in their rule book saying you can wear a hijab as long as it matches the color of your uniform. Okay. So the whole problem started when Hindu supremacist groups decided to protest uh, and, uh, dem and say and demand that their uh, Muslim uh, fellow students, women, girls be prevented from wearing the hijab. And it is under their pressure, under their threats of disruption that the schools and colleges changed their uh, rules overnight and decided to prohibit the hijab. So this has not been taken into consideration by the court at all. When it comes to equality, the court has made a claim which is, uh, you know, factually appears to be quite wrong because the court has said that, look, in India, you know, school uniforms, college uniforms, these are about uniformity and they are, you cannot be allowed to disrupt the uniformity of the school uniforms by having something that looks different. Now, that's, you know, factually wrong, right? Because as I pointed out with uniforms, um, all kinds of other religious markers are allowed. It is only the hijab which is sought to be excluded now from the ambit of all those things that are allowed. So there's no question of uniformity. In fact, the issue of uniformity the, uh, that the court has said is one of the most dangerous things in this judgment because uniformity is a wrong. It's, it's, a, it's a very a dangerous thing in a country and especially when it comes to young children in schools. In schools, in fact, rather than uniformity, they should be taught to respect plurality, not only of culture, not only of religion, but of gender, of sexual orientation, of color, of race, of, uh, of, of um, uh, physical or mental, uh, uh, ch mental challenges. All these things uh, students should be encouraged to uh, recognize that difference is not a bad thing. Difference is not something that needs to be suspected or punished. In fact, difference is something to be respected, welcomed, cherished, nourished, right? And uh, so this Supreme Court, uh, this uh, High Court judgment that talks about uniformity is uh, actually quite uh, dangerous uh, to, um, you know, uh, the values as we understand it in this country, uh, democratic values. Uh, the other thing is that this judgment uh, cites a particular passage from Dr. Ambedkar um, and uses it uh, in quite a wrong way. You can say it's a misuse of that paragraph. Because that in that passage, Dr. Ambedkar is arguing, he's saying that, look, Hindus and Muslims treat their women quite badly. Uh, and then he points out to a particular practice in uh, Muslim societies, where, and in fact, it's also there in some Hindu societies in Rajasthan, for instance, uh, even uh, Western UP, Rajasthan, Haryana, etc., which is called the Parda system. So uh, according to that system, women were supposed to remain indoors behind uh, the parda, behind the curtain in a sense. You're supposed to remain behind that. You should not come out in public. You sh and therefore, as a result of that in the 19th 20th and early 20th centuries, um, Muslim girls and women would not be able to, or even in those Hindu societies where this practice was there, they would not be allowed to go to school, allowed to go to college, allowed to participate in public activities, social, political, whatever. So Dr. Ambedkar was saying that this practice of segregation and seclusion, enforced segregation and seclusion is a bad thing because it prevents these women from going outside and you know, accessing education and you know, the general experiences of the world, right? Uh, now that passage has been cited and then the court says, well, whatever he said about the Parda system of segregation, enforced segregation and seclusion also applies to uh, girls and women voluntarily wearing the hijab. How does it do that? Dr. Ambedkar is not speaking about any piece of clothing at all. He is talking about a system that segregates and excludes and uh, forces women to remain indoors. Um, so how are you using that passage to justify uh, preventing these hijab wearing Muslim girls and women from accessing education, from you know coming out of their houses to study. And in fact, uh, what is being done is uh, quite the opposite of what Dr. Ambedkar wanted. These girls, these women are confident, they are fighting, they are articulate, they are out there struggling, fighting, asserting their rights. And they want to study. 
you are telling them that we won't let you study unless you take off your hijab and uh, if you want to keep your hijab on then you go to go stay at home don't study of uh, choose between your studies or the hijab or you study in a segregated institution in a muslims only institution uh, you can't study in the college or school of your choice where students of other communities also will be studying how is that in keeping with dr ambedkar's uh, intention and spirit of his words it's the exact opposite uh, likewise the shabari mala judgment has been uh, cited by the uh, judgment by this karnataka high court judgment and uh, basically the shabari mala judgment um, that passage is cited where it says that look um, not you know right to freedom uh, uh, the the constitutional uh, freedom to practice religion that doesn't protect all kinds of religious practices so if a religious practice says that dalits can't enter the temple or women can't enter a temple then that practice does not get that constitutional protection of the freedom to practice religion right absolutely right we are with that fair enough but uh, you know remember that this was you that was a passage and that judgment was about women demanding entry into a temple where they were prohibited by a misogynist practice from entering so the court said you cannot prevent women from entering spaces because they are women including religious spaces whether it's a darga in mumbai or a shabarimala in kerala you have to allow women to enter you cannot discriminate on the grounds of uh gender right uh how are you using that to justify preventing girls and women from entering schools and colleges in the name of uh, their because they happen to be wearing a scarf on their heads how is that at all uh, logical okay uh, you are using misusing a judgment which was about asserting women's rights to enter all public spaces uh without discrimination in order to justify the discrimination against a certain segment of women who happen to be wearing head scarves and who happen to be muslim right so the point is that this is a complete travesty in the name of uh, using these passages uh, at least and uh, finally we want to say that we stand uh, absolutely with the hijab wearing women and girls who are fighting for their rights to education and their dignity and we are also fighting for the rights of all women anywhere who are prevented from uh, you know entry into public spaces from leaving their homes from you know doing anything uh, based on various kinds of gender discriminatory practices so if uh, any women are prevented from entering colleges because they happen to be wearing jeans or skirts or something like that this has happened in india many times in fact it has happened under pressure from these hindu supremacist groups very very often uh we stand with those women we say that you cannot do that you cannot prevent someone from accessing education because of how they dress you cannot uh if anybody if any religious institution starts discriminating against women of their own religion whether it's a sikh uh, religious body or a muslim religious body or a hindu religious body or a christian religious body if they start telling women that you are lesser than other women because you happen to dress in a way which we consider to be unacceptable then you know you are basically um, uh, immodest and so on if they are being shamed for the way they dress or if they are facing discrimination or exclusion based on the way they dress we would stand with those women uh, but in this case in particular it's absolutely clear that women who happen to be wearing a, who are choosing to wear a head scarf that this judgment seems to not understand consent at all of women's autonomy at all they are saying oh you have the autonomy to wear it outside school but that's not the point the point is uh, and you are you are completely missing the point when you are when you are saying that uh, hijab is not essential to islam and islam won't come crashing down if women don't wear hijab of course but the point is will the schools and colleges come crashing down if you allow hijab wearing uh, girls and women to attend schools and colleges just as you are wearing uh, allowing others other students of other communities to come in with their turbans and their uh, scarves and their uh, dupattas and pallus and so on and so forth what is the problem why are you uh, in fact won't indian democracy come crashing down if you start 
uh, justifying these uh, absolutely unconstitutional discrimination against women, preventing them from accessing education um, in this manner. So uh, that is where uh, we stand and I think we all need to speak up for the girls and the women who are facing discrimination, stand with their struggle and uh, let us hope that the Supreme Court uh, is able to do justice to uh, justice with these girls and women as soon as possible.